Have you ever imagined your own funeral? Who will do the eulogy? Who will be your pallbearers? Who will attend or even care? I attended my own funeral. Let me explain. But before I do, I need to disclose that no one died or was injured in the making of the speech. On a typical day where I was happily playing solitaire and checking out Facebook at work, I got the call. June 6th, the anniversary of D-Day. Not World War II, Displacement Day, the day my 23-year job was eliminated. Just like that, it was all over. Hard work, tenure, and skills had nothing to do with this cost-cutting decision. Is it curious that my first thought wasn't to call my wife, but that I had to find a new Toastmasters club? On my ride to work on that fateful day, a news report announced 175,000 new jobs in the U.S., making the unemployment rate 7.6%. On my ride home, I was on the other side, one of the 11.7 million unemployed. To grasp the magnitude, take the entire population of New York City, then add four million people. The call was like a shot to the head. I was being put to rest and people were preparing for my funeral. Condolences rolled in. Hugs happened. Tears flowed. How will people see you when you're gone? An old manager once asked if I ran through a wall, would people follow? At the time, I didn't know the answer. I needed to know the answer. That was a lifeline, a call to action. Fast forward six years later, I don't recall a more calming day, a day of self-reflection, a chance to hover over my dead body and ask, was my life and career a success? The notes flooded in. Tom, you touched me. Personally and professionally, more than you'll ever know, Tom, we love you. This is your next speech. I ran through a wall and people followed. But how was I going to tell my three daughters that dad was being sent to the farm just like his childhood dog? The spending freeze on shoes, clothes, and pizza is worse than death to teenagers. My middle child's head tilted at a mourner's angle as a tear slowly rolled down her cheek as if to fall on my casket. My youngest held me in a bear hug as if it was the last time ever. My social media conscious 16-year-old told me that all responses to the relocation question on Facebook are no, as if I had a choice. The denial, the anger, the acceptance the exhaustive feeling of having my family watch my own demise. But my support system refused to let the last nail go into the coffin as they put in a crowbar made of emails, phone calls, and leads. I was being resuscitated. How many of you have a will prepared? A will reduces stress and chaos. The run through the wall question six years earlier had been my wake up call. I didn't realize how it would prevent my professional passing. My eyes were wide open as I built an extraordinary career-saving and life-changing network. In Keith Ferrazzi's book, Never Eat Alone, he notes, build it before you need it. Real relationships built over the years provided me meaning and are the reason for my success. I wasn't six feet under. I was six degrees from Kevin Bacon, or at least my next big lead. I wasn't flatlined. I was alive, and my support system was my CPR. My job loss was a celebration of life, not a funeral. It reminded me how deep my love and appreciation really are for my family, friends, and network. I wasn't defined by my job. I defined my own life and was going to do my funeral my way. No, I'm not going to belt out Sinatra. I lost my job, but I found me. I use my displacement as a reaffirmation that when I leave this earth, I'm leaving with no regrets. Think about your own funeral. When your spirit's hovering over the mourners, 
did you give them something to mourn about? And that didn't come out right. Our jobs aren't secure. Our support systems are constant evolving entities. And our lives aren't predictable. On the day I lost my job, someone shared the story of a local three-year-old with a brain tumor. I quickly realized I was simply having a bad day compared to that. We can all sit back and hope for something better. Or we can go out and find our crew to help steer our ship before our real funeral. So let's go back to the original question. Have you ever imagined your own funeral? Who will do the eulogy? Who will be your pallbearers? Who will attend or even care? My eulogy was shouted out by the many key people in my network who blew my trumpet with humbling accounts of who I was and had become. My pallbearers carried me when I couldn't go any further. The overwhelming flood of notes and messages showed who cared. I have to admit, I started writing the speech immediately after I got the call, including the ending. We all know we're going to die. <laughs> Not that ending. The speech ending the one where I secured a job. It's not overconfidence, just the belief that I'm surrounded by an ironclad network that refused to stop giving me oxygen. Are you ready to see your own funeral? I saw mine, and it was beautiful.